Steve Allen is in studio. Steve, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Great to have you with us. I am glad to be back. Do you want to talk about <laughs> and, the difference between English and grammar? Would no, you like to sir, I do not. Parse those words for me. <laughs> I went to school in the 60s in elementary school and so forth, and uh, so I... I uh, I learned all of that. Yeah, some of us, I guess, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> We've forgotten that that uh, that part of the brain. The that, file uh, cabinet part we just. <laughs> <saw. Okay. laughs> That's it. Steve James is also with us uh, this morning via telephone. Steve, can we hear you? Okay, Mark James. Mark yeah. James, I'm sorry. Yeah, Steve yeah, Allen, no Mark problem. James. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can you hear me, Ari? Yes, you sound good. We we had some problems with our phones earlier this morning, and we just got them fixed prior to your segment. So I was kind of going without a uh, working without a net there, hoping that you could actually hear me and we could hear you. So great to have you yeah, with us. Clear. Thank you. Uh, Mark is a project manager and hazard mitigation for Michael Baker uh, International. Great to have you both with us. And uh, Steve, you've got something coming up that I know is very important to you and what's going on in Jefferson County. That's correct. That's correct. Um, in in May of uh, this year. We uh, and uh, this would be the Jefferson County Commission entered into contract with Michael Baker International mm -hmm. to update our 2018 hazard mitigation plan. So uh, with uh, uh, Mark and uh, some representatives from Smith Printing or Smith Planning and Design, we're putting together uh, a, a series of meetings, and they are actually uh, will be putting all that information together to update our plan. Um, of course. Um, uh, every five years, the communities have to update their hazard mitigation plans, as uh, uh, former commissioner, council member uh, Stubblefield's yeah. aware of. It's it's something that's uh, it it helps us to get uh, funding for disasters. Steve, is that the phone book size document you put together back in Berkeley County about ten years ago? Well, I, <laughs> there's a couple of those plans, but uh, yes, that is correct. It's one of them. Yeah, you may be thinking about the uh, uh, the plan that the county commission puts together for uh, uh, future planning. Yeah, and the, that's the comprehensive that's plan. Comprehensive plan, and that's separate. Than no, no, I was thinking about the, yeah. okay. his mitigation plan he had done. We've got a hazard there. mitigation plan. We also have emergency operations plans, mm -hmm. and of course uh, other hazardous materials plans, and all. What our our job in emergency management is a lot in planning. So that's uh, that's why it's really important to bring all these different organizations together, such as for our hazard mitigation plan, to kind of lay out that map for how we're going to uh, lessen the the possibilities of uh, disasters occurring or lessening the the uh, impact on our communities. And that's what hazard mitigation. And, and how, Mark James, how do you figure into this? Well, I'm the uh, project manager from the consultant end of um, the the project. Uh, Michael Baker and Smith Planning Design uh, were hired, as uh, Steve said, in May. Uh, we've been working with the county and the local jurisdictions over the last uh, two months. Uh, we've gone through a lot of the planning process uh, portion of the uh, of the plan, documenting the uh, the meetings. We had our first meeting. Um, in May and was May 24th. Uh, that was our kickoff meeting. Uh, we have 80, uh, 80 um, stakeholders and uh, either county officials or community officials involved in this process. Um, and so they've all been invited to these meetings. They participated in doing some workshops on the, the May 24th. We have an upcoming meeting tomorrow at uh, one o'clock and that's at the um, at the hospice of uh, the, the Panhandle. It'll be about uh, an hour and a half, maybe two hour meeting between one and, and two thirty. Uh, our first meeting uh, again when that was on the twenty uh, fourth of May, and that was a uh, an hour and a half meeting. Uh, those during those meetings, we we have a lot of interaction with the members that uh, that show up, and we also have a um, a survey that's available to the general public. Uh, that's on the uh, the website, uh, which is the uh, jchsem at jeffersoncountywb.org. And that's the Emergency Management Homeland Security website. Uh, if you go to that, uh, if you go to the website, take the survey, there's a brief uh, introduction on the demographics that looks uh, reading the hazards in which we did in the first meeting through one to five. So the residents general public have the same opportunity to participate 
in this plan as the committee, the 80 member committee that member uh, members that we've selected from the county and from the um, uh, municipalities. There also uh, opportunity to, to rate the uh, community's availability to respond or their ability to respond, identify um, effective ways to communicate hazards, and uh, identify concerns or associate, uh, that are associated with disasters. Say, for instance, if there's an ongoing flooding um, uh, occurrence um, on your road or there's a culvert that fails, this is a great opportunity for those residents and the general public to bring this um, problem, uh, make it aware, make the county, make the municipalities aware, and then eventually, and once it's in the plan, um, that gives you that opportunity to provide for funding. Uh, as, as Steve said, um, every year there's a opportunity that uh, arises uh, sometime in um, end of end of uh, fall. Uh, the uh, FEMA provides uh, a, a grant. They're either through a BRIC grant or FMA grant that uh, over a course of the year. Um, you you uh, submit uh, an application, and by the by the time they it's reviewed, by the end of the summer the next year, those funds are received. So it gives you a great opportunity to put together applications for these for this grant funding. And if it's not in the plan, it's not going to get funded. So every community has to um, identify two um, types of uh, projects or action items for each hazard. And right now, I think I think there's um. There's about 20 hazards, so that gives you a lot of opportunity. Everything from drought to earthquake, flood, invasive species, landslide, severe wind and tornado, winter storms, and then some of the man-made um, or technical hazards or dam, fe- dam failures, civil disturbance, hazard materials, terrorism, cyber terrorism, uh, and utility interruptions. There's three new ones that we came up with. I mentioned two of them. Uh, over the last the, during that last May meeting, we we came up with uh, karst sinkholes. Wanted to add that uh, as well as cyber terrorism and utility interruption. So that's um, those are that's really where we we come in as a consultant. We we kind of Steve and and the and the folks at uh, emergency management they kind of drive the process and we support them uh, right. as much as we can in any way we can if it's public. Uh, public outreach or meeting coordination and um, actually pulling the plan together. But really, when you when you work on these plans, it's really the, the community input and the, the, the members of the committee that give you the information. We just take that information, put it in a blender, and then spit it back out. Okay, Mark, hang on there a moment. Yeah. Steve, you needed to fix something? Yes. Um, one of the... Uh what Mark mentioned was the email address to get to us, the jchsem at jeffersoncountywv.org. The web link is uh, using the Jefferson County Commission website, which is jeffersoncountywv.org. And there are links in that. There's um, on the front, on the first page, the home page of it, it'll say, for more information, go to the Homeland Security and Emergency Management uh, site on that website, and that's where the link is for that survey. And there's actually two surveys going two on surveys. now. Yes, John, John Doyle. Uh, Steve, the, the Norfolk Southern uh, has yep. a major line north-south through Jefferson County. Uh, uh, that is the same company that had the big uh, chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio. Uh, and I see on the Norfolk Southern uh, when the trains come through, there are a whole lot of chemical cars. Yeah, they're placards that are, that are right. on those tracks. Yep. What is Jefferson County's plan in case there is a disaster? Well, in case there's a rail, yeah, disaster. Okay, in, in case one of those trains derails, right. and yeah. Well, all communities in the United States have plans. They okay. are uh, required by law, by federal law, to have a plan for what to do. Jefferson County has one. Um, the the basic plan is on the fire and EMS to be able to recognize, identify, notify, and isolate uh, the areas that it occurs in by, recogni- by recognizing and identifying using those placards. Mm-hmm. We also have, uh, as a matter of fact, you probably saw it on the news just yesterday, I believe. Uh, one of the points that were made is that um, the responders in East Palestine uh, did not uh, we're not of, aware of the um, software on their smartphones 
for uh, the uh, um, uh, Ask Rail um, um, application. That is correct. And yes. so they they were they had a difficult time in recognizing. And of course, our first responders in Jefferson mm-hmm. County, as well as I know Berkeley County. They use it all the time for recognizing and identifying, notifying the correct, that's the next step, mm-hmm. is notifying the correct agencies to respond. And it may be the regional response team from Berkeley County for West Virginia. It may be uh, Loudoun County's hazmat team. Many times it's Washington County, Maryland's mm-hmm. hazmat team because they're very expensive operations. Yeah, and also in East Palestine. Mm-hmm. I think it was the, uh, uh, the, the fire chief Mm-hmm. said that he was given 13 minutes this four days after the wreck was given 13 minutes to make a decision whether to blow up this one tanker car whether it had to happen or not is have yeah. you all t- t- communicated with norfolk southern and said hey we need a little bit more time than that um i'm not aware of any operations that that operate that way as a yeah. matter of fact on hazardous materials incidents as uh as uh, Bill would be aware of, Eddie Gokenauer here in, in Berkeley County and so forth, uh, Marty Roberts, the fire mm-hmm. chief for Berkeley Fire. Um, any hazardous materials incident is a long, is a long operation anyway. And, and as a matter of fact, I think what you were talking, to, talking about or referring to, um, they, they weren't sure whether there was even any kind of uh, one chemical reacting with another chemical right. in those. And I think later on they found out there was not any yeah, reaction and, and going on And maybe they in those didn't things. have to blow that, blow that car up yeah. and see that huge plume of yeah. black smoke yeah. that drifted over the area for days. Yeah, and uh, we, don't, uh, we, we try not to do any Monday morning, huh, Monday monday morning quarterbacking <laughs> uh, this is monday yeah uh that's why we brought you here today like steve yeah. <laughs> so we we generally don't okay. don't uh react in in that manner as far as to question what's going on until all of the information is all weighed out and it will take a while i think to try and figure out just what per what yeah, and it wasn't that itself. fire chief's fault it was norfolk southern's yeah. fault well for not letting him know that, right away correct. what was in each of the cars well once again ask rail and we have that so okay. I, i'm not sure what's going on with the fire chief there okay I, monday morning quarterbacking we okay. won't you know go through there but we know that that app is available billy yeah the uh these plans the most valuable component of the plans is a process itself and you're not going to be able to resolve every situation or, or uh, uh, perceive or conceive of every possible part of the problem but the the process you get to know the people you get to work with the people i do have a more specific question and you've mentioned communication several times uh there's great communication between the participants you know each other well you know how to call them you know how to get in most every emergency that i can think of there is more difficulty in letting the public know about it what, and I know you've implemented in the past, as is Berkeley County, uh, uh, certain emergency numbers, but I don't think the majority of the public knows how to garner or gather this sort of information. What are you doing in the plan to improve the distribution of the information to the general public? Well, we have applications, once again. Um, one of them that we utilize in Jefferson County, I can't recall the one in Berkeley. I think it might be Alert Berkeley or Berkeley it Alert. It is Alert Berkeley, yeah. Um, but in Jefferson County, we use Nixle. We are updating and upgrading that in the uh, but let real, me, let real me close check. future to, to make the public aware of this. So they would be getting uh, uh, information on their cell phones or in their home phones. Yeah, but this mm-hmm. is the this is the kernel of the problem, Steve, that I have. Uh, Berkeley has Alert Berkeley. You have yours in Jefferson. Morgan yep. probably has another. The public does not really relate to these. Uh, well, we have a 911 address. If something goes wrong you, that you report in the end, great. We don't have that on the di- distributing the information the other way. And I'm not convinced. And the fact that Berkeley and Jefferson and others have different ways of getting information out just confuses, just yeah. confuses. So we, I'm begging for a, uh, a way that would keep us as a public more up to date than what we are right now. Yep. We uh, also not only have our own that we utilize, but there's one by the federal government called IPAWS. 
See, integrated I, public I, alert yeah. and warning system. Right. I right. don't know of any of these. If right. there was, if we had a train wreck downtown Martinsburg and this mm -hmm. plume of toxic smoke, if I was sitting there trying to garner information, I would have no way. Steve, to go. Are, are there grant mm -hmm. funds available through these programs for billboard and radio and TV advertising that gets the word out on these things? Actually, um, the, the grants that are out there, you could you could use some of that grant monies for billboards and things like that, and that's a a good way of addressing the the yeah. problem. Um, but, I, would, uh, I would buy time on this show, for instance, to get that word out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. James agrees with me. It'd be a great way to get the word. I'm out. sure Mr. Hornby agrees with him. <laughs> uh, of course, and, and this is uh, what Bill brought up. Uh, brought up was one of the things that needs to be addressed and can be addressed in our hazard mitigation plan. So you mentioned uh, Mark James. There were three new hazards they were they were going to do for this year: car sinkholes, cyber terrorism, and utility interruption. Would in, would utility interruption include internet? <laughs> is that considered a utility now? Are you looking for a grant? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have used one this morning. Uh, but in all seriousness, because of how much we rely on the Internet for almost everything now, including TV in most cases, is that now yeah. considered a utility? Yes. In fact, I'm actually doing a, a, a writing a grant for uh, you guys are going to be really just jealous, but uh, Key Biscayne down in Florida, uh, just south of Miami, they're doing an undergrounding uh, project where they're putting all their utilities underground. Uh, and they're a very flood-prone area, but also a very prone area to hurricanes mm -hmm. with winds, and so they lose power a lot. Um, and that's it's a multi-million dollar project. It's not a very large community. I think there's probably uh, 40,000, maybe 50,000 in total in, on that island. Um, and so, yeah, they're very prone to the, the hurricanes and floods, and so uh, this is one of the precautions that they're they're taking, and it's it's actually in their hazard mitigation plan that that's one thing that they want to do. And because it's in their plan, they can actually uh, provide uh, or apply for funding using the either the brick, which is the uh, building infrastructure, um, building uh, resiliency infrastructure community grant program, or a flood mitigation assistance grant from FEMA and as I said before they come around every year uh, by at the end of end of the year but most communities start working on those grants about now uh, at beginning or um, end of uh, summer I have about um, three minutes so. left John you have a question well actually to point yeah. out I don't think the internet is at this point yet considered a utility and the reason I'm, I'm it occurs to me is uh, late last week there was a hearing on the appointment of a lady named Gomez to be uh, one of the five commissioners of the Federal Communications Commission. It's been two to two for a long time. Uh, Gigi Sohn, who was originally appointed by Biden, was killed by a number of senators. Well, she wasn't killed, but her appointment was killed by a number of senators, including Joe Manchin. I thought we're back in the Roman days here. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 so and it, this lady Gomez has now been appointed. Looks like she's going to be confirmed. But there were several interactions with Republican senators, including Ted Cruz, and and the questions went sort of like, you're not going to turn the Internet into a utility, are you? And her response was to them was, Senator, I think it ought to be, but no, I'm not. That would require congressional legislation to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I, I'm deducing from that that it's still not legally uh, mm -hmm. a, a utility. Just yet. So uh, I, I want to address um, – um, John's uh, right. question in regards to planning. Okay. We do have a plan. There, there is our, our hazardous materials response plan within Jefferson County. We, we already have that addressed in a plan, in our plan that the first responders are aware of. And, okay. yeah. um, all different agencies, fire, EMS, law enforcement, hospitals, all are part of this. And the, the big proponent of this is the local emergency planning committees. And that's always, that's, a, that's an organization that's near and dear to my heart, and mm -hmm. no matter where I'm at, because that's where the rubber hits yeah. the road and you get the things done. But we've kind, of, we've kind of skated around the elephant in the room, and that's getting the word yes. out to the public. Yep. Uh, Steve, 
the public will be asked to rank these uh, different hazards that the counties are considering dealing with. Survey Monkey will allow them to do that. Yes. And how do they again do this? You uh, go to the county's website, Jefferson County's website. That's jeffersoncountywv.org. The main page uh, has a link onto it that tells you to go to the Homeland Security and Emergency Management page. And then from there, there's a link to the um, survey on there in Survey Monkey. You can rate each hazard on a one to five scale, and there are two open ended questions on ways that Jefferson County can do things better. So yeah. there's a lot of opportunities for public input. Yeah. And once you get that public input, as uh, Mr. James told us on the telephone, it's a chance to compile all that information and then come up with a plan based on what seems to be most important to members of the community. And our, uh, the big meeting, a four hour meeting in uh, the last part of July, should be the last week of July, we'll be having another meeting. We'll be, we'll be having that meeting at the Ranson Civic Center. And that's a great opportunity to come in and uh, you know, have that input on how, do we, how, do we, how are we made aware of these emergencies and so forth. And Steve, very hang on, final minute next. Mark James, thank you so much. Appreciate your time this morning on the phone. Thank you.